Hello and welcome to the Album Man and today I'm going to be doing weekly rock news for the, what, 10th of February 2013? Yeah, I think that. And hopefully this should actually be on a Monday for the first time since I probably started the series. And this week is going to have a bit of a twist. Now you notice I haven't done it for a bit, that's because quite funny there wasn't any news that particularly grabbed me. And I'm going to add something to this to make this video, you know, maybe a bit more substantial. So it's going to be weekly rock news plus what I've been listening to over the last week. I hope some people might find that at all interesting. I don't know. You know, tell me in the comments below. Anyway, so the first news, we're going to be talking about the drummer Ginger Baker. And this is because he has, well firstly, he has been voted the craziest drummer in rock history by Esquire magazine. And to me, I mean, I know he certainly was a bit eccentric but, and, you know, complete grumpy git by all accounts, but I really wouldn't say he can quite beat someone like, I don't know, Keith Moon. I mean, Keith Moon is the first person in recorded history to throw a television out of a hotel window. He also drove a car into a swimming pool and destroyed Pete Townsend's hearing permanently by blowing up a bloody drum kit. I mean, how much more rock and roll can you get than that? I mean, Ginger Baker, yeah, I mean, he certainly took a, a ton of drugs and raised his polo horses or whatever, but I really wouldn't say it's the craziest drummer. But the next bit of thing about Ginger Baker um, is that apparently um, the producer Rick Rubin, who produced ZZ Top's Le Futura, fantastic album, um, he's producing currently, or one of his albums he's producing, is the new Black Sabbath record, and he wanted Ginger Baker to actually be the drummer on this because of course Bill Ward's departure last year, so yeah, he wanted Ginger Baker on this album. But Iomi sort of shot him down, and he says, and I quote, I thought, bloody hell, I just couldn't see that. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure that really would have gone. Personally, I'm quite happy with the choice of Brad Wilk. I think he's a competent drummer. A bit unusual. I, I wasn't quite expecting him. But I certainly think he'll do the job for the band, and very much looking forward to 13, or whatever they choose to call it. Okay, next up... We're going to be talking about the Grammys, yes, the most irrelevant awards ceremony in music, well, certainly in my opinion. And I thought we'd at least talk about who won the Hard Rock Slash Metal Grammy, and to be honest, it went to a deserved winner. And this was Hailstorm with a fantastic track, Love Bites, So Do I, from last year's album, The Strange Case Of. Fantastic album, fantastic track. They do deserve it, even though I probably would have preferred to have seen Megadeth win with Whose Life Is It Anyway. Not that I think it's the better track, it's more the... I mean, the Grammys just seem to be trolling Megadeth, and I feel a bit sorry for them. They seem to be in it every single year, and yet haven't won yet. So, I'd just like them to win for that reason. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Oh, I may as well say the best rock performance was Black Keys, Shocker. Best rock song was Black Keys, Lonely Boy. And best rock album, El Camino. I mean, that came as a bloody surprise. As much as I disagree, I think the Black Keys are massively overrated. Yes, they were talented couple of people, but really they're nothing that special in blues rock, and I don't know why they seem to be the face of blues rock at the moment, there's many better bands. And the best blues album went to Dr. John's Locked Down, which I can't say no, but I'll give it a listen. Okay, and next news is about Guns and Roses. So firstly, we have the one of the guitarists, Bumblefoot, he has said that he doesn't want Guns N' Roses to release another album, but he still wants them to release new music. He wants them to release it um, track by track. He says, and I quote, Personally, I don't want to do an album. I would like to just do a song. Let's just bite off a song and get a song out there and then bite off another song and get that out there. When there's so much touring, so much other stuff going on, don't try and take on 14 songs. Do a song, then another song, then another song, and then figure it out from there. So basically, just saying that Guns N' Roses should just release singles on iTunes. Now, the main problem I have with that is, as much as I loathe Chinese democracy, 
Guns N' Roses are still my favourite bands. I still want a physical copy of their new music, and I can't remember the last time I saw a physical single anywhere. I think the last time I came across one at all was Feeders Borders from their um, album last year. And, um... God damn it. <laughs> and they were selling it from their website, a single on a 7-inch vinyl, on CD, and cassette, weirdly. But, um... Yeah, I found this a bit stupid. I think, in fact, it's really stupid. I mean, just, I hope they don't. But the biggest thing for me, which I'm so happy about, is that Axl Rose lost his $20 million lawsuit. Now, is it just because, you know, I'm uh, not the biggest fan of Axl at the moment? No, it's because of how bloody stupid this was. Now, one of my favourite games of all time is Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock from 2007. And yes, it gets a lot of flack, so do the whole Guitar Hero series. Personally, I love them. They introduced me to so much music. In fact, Guitar Hero 3 introduced me to Guns N' Roses, to Rage Against the Machine, to Dragon Force, to The Runaways, to I could just list bands and bands that this game and this series has introduced me to. It really has had a profound impact on my musical discovery. So, I've always had a soft spot for them and still enjoy playing this game to this day. And on the track Welcome to the Jungle, which appears on it, you play as Slash, which is bloody awesome. I mean, seriously awesome. So, Axor decides to sue them in 2010 for breaching an agreement, and the agreement was meant to be that he said they could use the track Welcome to the Jungle as long as Slash and Axor a Velvet Revolver don't appear in the game, but of course Slash was the main image on the cover artwork and was playable in the game, so Axel, you know, demanded $20 million of compensation, saying that the song helped them generate $1 billion in sales. And luckily the um, judge threw out the last of his arguments after having previously warded out his claims of fraud and misrepresentation. And I'm so, so happy about this. It was a stupid loss, so it was him just being such a prick, quite honestly. Um, I'm so pleased he lost. I hated him when he started this stupid, stupid lawsuit. It was such a petty, petty thing. Bloody pleased he lost. So yes, that concludes the weekly rock news section. So now we're going to move on to um, what I've been listening to um, this past week or past couple of weeks more. So firstly, what I'm going to be listening to today, Die Straight Brothers in Arms. Um, I realised I'd never listened to this album, one of those things, but have most Die Straight albums on vinyl. And it is just so good. It sounds so good on vinyl. I mean, my favourite track, Money for Nothing, the single classic, one of the greatest, if not the greatest guitar riff of all time, maybe not the greatest, but certainly one of them. Um, fantastic album by Mark Knopfler and the other people. Um, here, this doesn't look like much, but it is Deep Purple's band, the thing that just bloody fell down over there. Um, my favourite Deep Purple album, um, because I love Glenn Hughes to death, and I love David Coverdale and Richie Blackmore, so put them all together in a band and you have a pretty phenomenal album, and they deliver. Um, Queen's Live Killers, the probably best album Queen ever released. I've always thought that their studio albums have always been a little disappointed with things like News of the World. Yes, they have the classic songs like, you know, We Are The Champions, but then they have really, really dodgy songs in the middle, and it's just like, uh, but this, this is just all killer, as the name suggests, and it's phenomenal. It's them at their best, live, and it's before they did all the sort of It's a Kind of Magic Radio Gaga stuff. So, you know, it's a lot of the older stuff. It has stuff like 39 and Dreamers Ball on, as well as classics like Don't Stop Me Now, Bohemian Rhapsody, um, Real Rock, you and all those. You know, it's a fantastic double. Absolutely love it. We have here Saxon's Denim and Leather from 1981, and this is the album that features Princess of the Night, the song about the train on it, which is my favourite Saxon song, and of course it also features Denim and Leather, probably my favourite Saxon album, and yeah, I've been listening to this because I'm very excited for that upcoming release, Sacrifice, um, which should be coming out soon, I will be reviewing that when I get to hear it. So on to CDs I've been listening to, an album that I thought was a compilation, but it turns out isn't, which I've been pleased about, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts, I Love Rock and Roll. This is one of the first albums I ever owned. 
and obviously still Owen. And I always thought this was a compilation until literally last week when I realised it was actually an album because I was looking at the Runaways and stuff because I um, really need to get some of their stuff. Love them to death. But um, Joan Jett always been my favourite member and this title track, I Love Rock and Roll, yes it's a cover but oh my god, it's just brilliant. It's in my top 100 favourite songs, I love it and I love Joan Jett, it's a fantastic album. Definitely recommend checking it out if you like sort of female fronted punk really. Of course, did a review of this, been listening to Gary Moore live at Montreux 2010 because well, it's been the anniversary of Gary Moore. Yeah. Do check out my review of that if you haven't already, because not many people have, but I wasn't expecting big reviews on Gary Moore. I certainly did it to on the great man. Um, Iron Maiden's Iron Maiden. Yeah, the booklet's out, couldn't be bothered putting it back. But um, yes, this is the classic first Iron Maiden now, Paul Diano on vocals, and Dennis Stratton on lead guitar, and that drummer who they now give loads of money to to support, because I think he has, like, he has some horrible illness. So yeah. But fantastic, and one of my, well, a lot of people say it's one of their favourite Maiden albums, and it is, I mean, it's in my top 100 albums, but I, I love Maiden a lot. I wouldn't say it's as good as Number of the Beast, or even, I'm a massive fan of Maiden's modern work, like Final Frontier and Matter of Life and Death, and Brave New World, that's my second favourite Maiden album. But this is certainly up there, it's certainly one of the best. And like Fear of the Dark, which went ahead, I was very disappointed by that. We're getting close to the end now. We have Marilyn Manson's Antichrist Superstar, and I honestly think this is probably the heaviest album I own. I picked this up for a quid in CX, um, said in my last CDs I bought recently, I think, or one of them not long ago. And yeah, I think this is the heaviest album I own. It was a lot heavier than I was expecting, kind of off the back of Mechanical Animals and Hollywood, but um, it's good. I mean, most Marilyn Manson fans seem to say it's their best. I disagree. I'd say Hollywood is just breathtaking, um, it's my top 30 albums ever I think. This, it's good, I need to give it a second listen though, I don't know, it just didn't grab me the first time. Another album that didn't grab me the first time, Coheed and Cambria 3, In Keeping Secrets of Science Air, a lot of people say it's their best, I don't think it's as good as Good Apollo 4, I mean that album is again breathtaking, but it's certainly a solid, strong album, it has some, you know, catchy tunes in it, but it's not as catchy as Good Apollo. Um, or even certain tracks from like The Aftermath and stuff, like Domino the Destitute. God, I love that track, I've been listening to that so much. Reviews of those two albums will be coming up very soon. But yeah, another one I really need to give a second listen to. I can see it definitely growing on me quite a bit. But, I mean, you know, the songs I really enjoyed, Blood Red Summer, um, the title track, the Campo Valorium trilogy thing. It's a, not a bad album at all, really enjoyed it, but it's just not quite as good as I expected. And yet another album that is... Oh, God, I got this album so bloody long ago. Mastodon's Crack the Sky. My dad bought it for me as a surprise um, thing. He thought that I might like them when I first put it on I didn't like it, second time I put it on I didn't like it, it's become, become a ritual the last few years, I listen to it every year, so I thought for 2013 I'd give it, give it that listen and it clicked, it finally clicked with this band, I really enjoyed the album, I don't think it's the modern metal classic many people do, but it clicked, songs like Oblivion, um, The Year, um, The Last Baron, fantastic songs, and yeah, um, it's definitely growing on me. But the best album probably out of these I've been listening to has to be this. Judas Priest Nostradamus. Wasn't sure what to expect from this. It's a double Judas Priest album. I mean, what? And this is. It's a massive departure. It might be. It's very different to anything they've ever done. Usually Judas Priest's albums like Breaking the Law or Screaming for Vengeance. They have that sort of simplistic metal sound. I mean, the riff for the Breaking the Law. Uh, sorry, I mean British Steel is the album. But the riff for Breaking the Law is single from British Steel. I mean, it's you know, not exactly a complicated riff, but you know they still play awesome songs. But this this features synthesizers, well, guitar synthesizers, not heavily, but it has a bigger, grander sound to it, more of a symphonic production, and it's a true concert. It's a proper concert about the life of Nostradamus, who I have been to the um, house of. Um, I've always been interested in Nostradamus. I find him a very fascinating character. And this is a wonderful, genius, genius album. It's nothing like they've ever done, so I don't know what fans think of this album, but I can understand if fans don't like it as much as the classic stuff. But to me, I think this is possibly the best thing they've ever done. Um, yeah, I had it. Yeah, I, I think it's amazing, and it's going to be entering my list 
very high when I listened to it a second time through. So yes, this has been Yab Man. Thank you for watching weekly What Can You Use slash What I've Been Listening To Recently. Hope you enjoyed the What I've Been Listening To Recently. If you haven't, please tell me and then I'll just keep this to Rock News. Or if you want that to be a different segment, again, feedback helps very, very much. So this has been the Album Man. Thanks for watching. And also check out my review of Red's Release to Panic, which will be coming out either tomorrow or today. I don't know. But anyway, check that out. Thanks for watching. This has been the Album Man. Can't wait to subscribe. And long live rock and roll.